Okay, so today we wrap up our series on choosing fruit tree varieties here in Arizona. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here today. It's October 2019. So we're wrapping up today a series we've been doing on choosing fruit tree varieties here in Arizona. So what we're going to do today, we're going to cover multiple types of trees, of fruit trees, and we want to try to squeeze them all into here and wrap all this up so we get a good idea of what we'll be planting on the new farm. So I'm going to start out with our two primary objectives. We've been talking about this throughout this series. We're going to be focusing on trees on the new property that are high production trees. So trees that are going to give us a lot of fruit. The priority number two would be ease of maintenance. So we want low maintenance trees, trees that are not going to require a lot of input on our part because we've got way too much going on to spend a lot of time with one tree trying to nurse it along to get a handful of fruit. So now what I want to do is I want to start with our first category for today. That would be what you see behind me here. These are our pomegranates. So the first tree you see behind me here would be our wonderful pomegranate. This pomegranate tree is about four years old. Very, very high production on this tree. We get a lot of very large pomegranates that set in the spring and are basically ripe about a month or so from now. So very, very high production on your wonderful pomegranate. Next pomegranate would be our Granada pomegranate. Uh, this one we got from Reed a couple years ago. Uh, production wise, not nearly as productive as the wonderful pomegranate. The pomegranates themselves are a little bit smaller, so the fruit size is smaller. However, the fruit inside, the flesh, is much, much darker. And of course, that's where you get your lycopene, so the antioxidant power in pomegranates would be in that dark red color. So you get a nice dark red flesh around that seed. Um, however, production wise, not quite as productive. Productive. Next up would be our Austin pomegranate. We have this one planted uh, for our son. <laughs> That's our son's name, so it's one of the reasons why we got this particular variety. Very, very similar to the wonderful pomegranate as far as the fruit itself. Production wise, it actually is a good solid producing tree. Not as productive as the wonderful pomegranate, but it's a couple years younger. Um, so production wise, still pretty decent. Last up for pomegranates would be our Angel Red. So this is our Angel Red pomegranate. From a production standpoint, it's okay. Um, you can see the tree itself doesn't have much in the way of pomegranates left on it. Um, however, it does produce fairly decent. The one thing about the Angel Red, the Angel Red has a seed that's softer than the other varieties that we have here on the farm. So very easy to just eat the entire seed itself. So to wrap up real quick on pomegranates, I want to kind of lump in maintenance here with pomegranates. If Lori wants to scan down on the ground, you can see we have pomegranates everywhere on the ground. One of the things that is a major challenge for us here with pomegranates, even though we get very good production on these trees, the biggest challenge would be bird damage. They get a tremendous amount of bird pressure and the birds literally go from one pomegranate to the next and pack a hole in it. So the pomegranates you do see on this tree, I'm gonna say probably 80 to 90% of them actually have holes, so they're no good. So essentially from a, uh, an actual final production standpoint, they produce really well, but we don't get a final product unless we protect them from birds. You're gonna see our Fuyu persimmon here. This is actually a giant Fuyu persimmon. So this tree here, it's a really cool looking tree. I like the way the tree looks. However, it we don't get any final product off this tree. It actually does produce. So we had a lot of fruit set on here this year. However, the birds come through and they eat all of it. I mean, eat it. There's nothing left. So there's not a single piece of fruit on here. Dozens of fruit set. No fruit going into the fall. Really no production. Uh, it's low maintenance, but uh, hey, we need production. Okay, so next up would actually be one that I should have put into our berry video. This would be our goji berry. So this goji berry, we've abused it. We've transplanted it a couple times. It's, you can see, we used to have it up on a trellis that we pulled down. Uh, it's, it's overgrown at this point. However, from a production standpoint, it's loaded with berries. So there's berries all over in here. Now, the challenge with this, of course, would be bird pressure. As soon as those berries turn orange, they're immediately devoured by birds. So Lori and I have gotten maybe a dozen fruit off of this in the last three or four years. So we don't get a whole lot of the harvest itself. Um, however, it is very productive. And from a maintenance standpoint, you can really kind of let it go. You really don't need to do much at all. 
it will do a lot of invasion <laughs> in the entire area around it. So I'm just kind of looking at it now. We um, have pulled pups off of this. We've got them in pots because uh, we will be taking it to the new farm. But just looking over here, I have little pups that are coming up out of the middle of nowhere back here. So that is our dead Barbados cherry. And it actually has a couple of gojis coming out of the ground right over there. So this tree, what, six, seven, eight feet away, it's got its roots heading in that direction and it's sending up pups. So you can put this in the ground and it's going to replicate itself with no issues. Uh, it is very, very productive. Uh, so we're definitely gonna give this one a shot. So another category of citrus that we forgot in our citrus video would be our kumquats. So we have four kumquat varieties here and all of these are in pots. They've all done very, very well with plenty of watering through the summertime and the placement. We talked about that as well. So with these four varieties, they're in pots. They are coming with us. We are not gonna leave them here we're gonna probably plant them as a group I don't know we haven't decided for sure um, but kumquats do really really well just like any other citrus here in Arizona the next category would be nut trees we only have one nut tree planted here that's our all-in-one almond you'll see it behind me here we are absolutely going to be planting nut trees on the farm we're gonna put an all-in-one almond in we're gonna probably choose one or two other varieties of almonds to also put in there for some cross-pollination because uh, from what I understand that does assist with production we have gotten some production off of this tree but it's really just beginning nut trees it takes several years before you really get full production off of your trees so we're nowhere near its peak production uh, capacity we're also going to be trying multiple other varieties so we know pecans for sure will be on that farm because they're massive trees so we're going to be, have plenty of space for pecan trees and we're kicking around some other ideas so we'll see where we wind up when it comes to nut trees so next fruit we want to talk about today would be a loquat so you see behind me here are yehuda loquat so there's a lot of different loquat varieties the yehuda is the one that we chose here really do like this variety it's very very good tasting variety nice size fruit there also is a big gym that we definitely are going to probably try there as well i understand that one is a little bit bigger and also a very good option for us here in arizona we've talked uh, about placement of this tree we have some ideas of where we want to put loquats on the new property that i think will actually suit them best however loquats do fantastic you do get very good production off of these trees it actually happens at a young age we were shocked when we got production off of this tree this year actually because of the way the tree is designed it highly hides the fruit really, really well. <laughs> so good production on this tree, very low maintenance. Uh, once you get past that first year, uh, you can see we just kind of let it go. So it truly turns into a bush. Um, nice, beautiful tree. So next category of trees would be your true sweet cherries. So what you see behind me on either side of me here would be our Royal Lee and our mini royal so these two are cross pollinators of each other um, they're a few years old now they don't grow well they haven't produced a single cherry we haven't even gotten a flower on these two so these are two that we are definitely going to skip we're not going to try these on the new property this is our sherwood jujube this tree actually you can see it's just a beautiful massive tree they grow really really well here in the desert uh, from a production standpoint reed at rsi growers has a nice specimen at the front of his place it's actually a sherwood as well so we'll be getting one of these trees from him definitely putting this in his tree was overloaded with fruit when i was there a few weeks ago he let me try a dozen or so very interesting taste to a jujube but massive production on that tree same variety here we did actually wind up getting a couple of fruit on this which we were kind of surprised this tree was transplanted about a year and a half ago so to get production after a year and a half in the ground is really really good so next up would be guava so what you see behind me here would be pineapple guava these pineapple guavas we actually have several fruit on here which we're shocked at they're not ripening up but we did get some fruit the guavas i'll tell you what guavas are a tropical tree however there are some cold hardy varieties that i think we're going to try out pineapple guavas we're going to definitely put a few in because they're basically no maintenance as long as you water them they're going to be able to take the full sun they struggle a little bit in the summertime at the peak but pretty much all of your fruit trees generally do uh, have no problems whatsoever with our winter so uh, next tree would be a moringa tree 
ours is dead <laughs> this one got killed off with our 20 degree temps this uh, past winter now if you're in the city moringa is going to be an easy one for you it may need a little bit of protection during the winter time from a production standpoint you eat the leaves and the pods it grows just incredibly here in our desert heat once you get into may or so these things really start to take off they give you a tremendous amount of leaf productivity and also the pods which are edible and they actually taste really good so our challenge of course out here in whitman is how we can get them through the winter time it's going to be a challenge for us but we're going to give it a shot because production is amazing okay so to wrap up the video for today let's talk a little bit about a couple of things that we know we're taking with us pomegranates are very productive we've got multiple varieties here our pomegranate wine by the way was amazing so we definitely are going to be utilizing pomegranate trees on the new farm as far as how extensive that's going to be it may not be all that extensive just because they are a challenge from a maintenance standpoint and getting that productivity actually to the table can be a challenge however they do grow amazing here we're definitely going to bring the goji berry with us very easy to replic replicate i like it because we can use it up against our chicken coop uh, places like that where the chickens can eat it we don't care if the birds eat it it you can make it into a bush you can make it into whatever you want to easy to maintain very very high production so we will be, be bringing all of the kumquat varieties very easy to grow you can keep them in pots you can put them in the ground very very easy for us here in arizona we have the one loquat variety here, the Yehuda loquat. Uh, we will definitely be putting another Yehuda loquat in the ground there and probably more than one variety. We really do enjoy loquats. Cherries, I don't know whether or not we're going to try any sweet cherry varieties there. Uh, the Barbados cherry, we didn't cover that today. That died to the ground. It's done. Uh, we're not going to try that because it's a tropical tree. It's way too cold for us out here in Whitman. So there's way too much maintenance trying to get that through. Uh, regular cherries, haven't seen any production on that tree at all. So really kind of a struggle i think with any cherry variety for, uh, for us probably won't bother touching them at all because no production and very difficult maintenance is just not part of our, of our plan jujubes we have the sherwood jujube here we definitely will put a sherwood jujube in the ground there's a couple of other varieties that we're considering a lee and a lang maybe the two of them uh, we really do enjoy jujubes very unique fruit very high productivity and very very easy to maintain uh, persimmons we do have the fuyu persimmon it does put fruit on uh, the challenge there of course is going to be maintenance and that's mainly because of bird pressure so you're going to be challenged with keeping the birds away from your persimmons the tree itself does produce and it produces nice and heavy so the issue there is going to be maintenance guavas we do have the pineapple guava a very easy tree or bush for you here in arizona very easy to maintain productivity would be a question mark i'm not 100 percent sure whether we'll get ripe fruit onto the table uh, however we're going to give it a shot also want to try another maybe one or two varieties to see if we can get them through the winter which of course is our biggest challenge here Moringa, we already know Moringa does really, really well here in Arizona. For you guys in the city, a no-brainer. Definitely get a Moringa into the ground, especially if you're looking for something that is a green that you can have all summer long. When all of your garden beds are dying off, that thing's pumping out greens like nobody's business. And then, of course, nut trees. We have our almond, our all-in-one almond here. We'll absolutely be putting that in the ground. We're going to try a couple of other almond varieties. We're also going to be doing some pecans. And as I kind of mentioned as I was talking about nut trees, we may try a couple of other types types of nuts as well. So to wrap up the series, I really hope that I've given you an idea of just the amazing amount of variety you can grow here in Arizona. Truly a unique environment. We can grow everything from citrus, which can only grow in a few states really productively, to stone fruit, fig trees, grapes and grapevines, all these different varieties that you can get into the ground here in Arizona and really grow with amazing production. Most of them are fairly low maintenance, you know, compared to a garden bed, it takes very little maintenance for your trees. So really want to encourage you guys, utilize the, um, the experience that we have here. We're definitely going to utilize that experience as we move on to six acres and we incorporate a nice big orchard into that full functioning farm. Really hope that this has given you guys some inspiration to go ahead and plant some fruit trees yourself. So just want to thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. Instagram and Facebook, we post content there. You won't see here on the YouTube channel. In our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free, painless way to help support the channel. It doesn't matter what you buy. If you start with that link, you help to support us here. 
So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you.